Okay, hello everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia. Um, I'm delighted today to be talking to Prem Sigurti. Hi Prem, how are you? Hi Rachel, I'm good, thanks. Good to see you again. Good, good. Thank you for joining me today. Um, you have been, we have been working together um, on the developing the Managing Children with Clubfoot course. Um, you've been an amazing coordinator of the course from the ICRC side of things. Um, so I was hoping to chat to you today a little bit about your, what you do and your involvement with ICRC and how ICRC works with children with clubfoot as well. Um, so perhaps before we do anything else, would you mind just uh, introducing yourself to everybody to tell them a little bit about who you are and what you get up to at work? Good. Hello, everyone. My name is Prem Sagurthi. Uh, uh, by profession, I'm a physiotherapist. And for the moment, I'm actually a physical rehabilitation manager uh, uh, for the ICRC in Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, with regard to what I do, uh, well, at the moment, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with ICRC's physical rehabilitation structure. Uh, we basically work with uh, persons with physical disabilities requiring uh, mobility devices such as prosthetics and orthotics. Uh, but at the moment, our physical rehabilitation structures are now uh, I would say, challenge with the circumstances of dealing with the new needs of disability that emerge. Uh, and uh, for us to be prepared with this new drive and this new need that is coming up, uh, both clinically, technically, and in terms of managerial skills to be able to address to this growing, uh, let's say, disability need within the whole global context. Um, so at the moment, that's the nature of the work we are involved in. Yeah. And um, how? So tell us a little bit about um, where Clubfoot fits into that. How big are your Clubfoot services? Um, what are the kind of services that you, in your physical rehabilitation centre, offer for uh, children with Clubfoot? So essentially, our work is. Uh, uh, primarily focused in areas of conflict. Uh, we respond to the needs of uh, tertiary level care, uh, especially in cases where people are in need of mobility services uh, and assistive device services. Now, given the fact that uh, Club Feet is rather new to us, uh, I would say our programs are generally, I would say, embracing the fact that once families realize that there is a physical rehabilitation center that is capable of giving them some subsistence level of service, uh, they come seeking for uh, for some uh, service, be it cerebral palsy or club feet or uh, other systemic, uh, let's say, congenital anomalies, I would rather put it as. Uh, and uh, I think Clubfoot primarily had presented to us as a challenge to start with. And um, every context has its given challenges. I would think as the needs present, um, we cannot shy away from addressing these needs. And I do believe that uh, uh, today we stand here is because we do realize that many professionals in the context that we work in are also void of understanding uh, that club food is a treatable condition and we should be addressing it to it when it presents at our doorstep. So, in your context, it sounds like um, it's a it's a new service for you um, where you're working in your rehabilitation centre. So, a new kind of emerging service. How have you approached that sort of situation at, at, at a kind of? I know you've been working at a national level and looking at national strategies. How how has your work been involved in setting up the service there? So. Essentially, it's, I would say, we haven't gone yet into the biggest, bigger sphere of, of let's say, um, dealing with disabilities at a national scale. Um, the need has presented with the partners that we work with at the level of physical rehabilitation centers. And so as we started addressing to the core needs, uh, I think we've had other needs that have come up uh, and uh, Clubfoot happens to be one of them. And uh, 
given the fact that um, in our existing structure and facilities, we are beginning to acquire children who sometimes come to us uh, post-surgically or they come to us uh, with no intervention whatsoever. And um, yes, the, the situation demands that we are in a position to address to this particular condition as it presents to us. So I would say, yeah, the, the, as, I, as globally the need uh, context in itself is transforming, I would say our services also need to transform. So that's where we are today. So, how, so t tell me, how are you looking at transforming those services? What kind of things are you um, doing to, to do that? Um, so you're back. So we lost Prem for a moment there. Uh, you were talking about transforming services, how you've had to transform your service. Can you kind of, just thinking about people who, who might be coming into this course, who are in the same situation that you've sort of found yourself in, um, to transform the service, to set up the service for the emerging need that you've come across. Can you just kind of give some sort of indication of how, what kind of steps are you taking to do that transformation? So at the moment, uh, <clears throat> the way we deal, let's talk about club fit since that's the topic we are, uh, we are focused at the moment. Uh, in the case of club fit, for instance, uh, we do have some projects that are present with the, with the demands of addressing to, to club food demands. I would put as a, as a uh, and uh, one of the things that we're doing at the moment is uh, we're trying to, I would say, um, familiarize ourselves with the skill, with the clinical methodology and the skill, uh, and uh, incorporate this into the physical rehabilitation services that we provide. So in a way, we complement to the existing physical rehabilitation services that we have. Yeah. And uh, in return, what we do is also we, tell, we tend to take it from, I would say, that's to us, that's our grassroots. And from there, we start building the resources at the level uh, of the physical rehabilitation center. We work with our partners. Essentially, most projects we work with is with partners. Um, you know, build uh, in the sense of provide on-site trainings for physiotherapists, uh, for doctors, um, and then initiate a small setup of a clinic, see how this particular setup actually functions. And uh, essentially that is what has happened in some of our projects. I mean, uh, it starts at a very, very small level and then the numbers grow and they're so big that uh, then we also have to expand our infrastructure and our resources. So the education, um, education is a major part of this, uh, of starting this service, isn't it? So how does this, um, and we've worked with you to obviously you've um, been our main partners in developing this online course um, and we work with you so that, so that we develop a course that can help to train your workforce as well as everyone else as well. So how... Um, how important do you see a kind of a course like this for the education of individuals in your rehabilitation center in your country as well as everyone else around the world so you see the thing is um for club feet, it's a treatable condition and i think that's what kind of grasps our attention if untreated, it leaves someone with a lifelong disability. Uh, it has a socioeconomic implication. It has an implication of absolute uh, uh, seclusion. Uh, so when we look at it, that if it's a condition that can, um, a disability that can be prevented, I mean, uh, it is amazing that we need to get the message far and wide. And to train somebody in uh, clinical application of what we are talking about, the Pancetti in particular, is the fact that it's one of these applications that has been tried, tested, and it's very difficult for us to get somebody to a spot, to train them, to also generate awareness. To me, this MOOC in itself is a, is a strong awareness tool that actually sets light to what is available and what enables people to do practitioners like physiotherapists, doctors, and prosthodontists that, oh, this is a clinical condition that can be treated, and this is the message we get through this MOOC. And uh, the next stage is once they have learned the clinical methodology is to acquire a facility that would train them on the practical skills. And I think 
that's the sequence. That's the sequence we need to follow. And I have a feeling that in many instances, people are void of this information. And uh, I think a MOOC like this is a perfect medium uh, that uh, that kind of lets everybody know, please, uh, this is something that you could do. Yeah, I mean, you're so right. Uh, the uh, Just building, using an online course like the course that we're doing now, this building the knowledge base around the topic um, it's a really good way to do it it's a very cost effective way to do it it's a great way for many many people to do it all together well all at the same time and for many people just to do it over time but I think it is like you highlighted it's really important it's just a starting point isn't it once we have that base of knowledge yeah. it's really important that we go on and um, sort of develop our practical skills with a face-to-face -face training course. So the, the, the sort of in-person training courses are really important as well. But this course it builds a good groundwork for that. So I think, you know, people doing this course, you can either consider yourself as someone who is building their knowledge and wants to then go on and do a practical skills training course. Or you might be someone or people might be someone watching this who and doing the course who could actually do the course and then go on to be a trainer at the other end because they are a bit more experienced. Um, so you're right, it is a really good way to sort of start developing the workforce, but we mustn't forget those practical training skills at the end. Um, yeah, so for people who are doing this course, do you, do you have any advice for them on sort of what they should be thinking about focusing on, what are the important things that they should be thinking about, how can they get the most out of this course? I think uh, uh, the objective, this is a very, uh, management of club feed is a very straightforward and objective intervention. It's a... Uh, you go wrong, you will mess up with the foot, that's for sure. And uh, number two is you're helping somebody prevent disability. And yes, uh, uh, we need to take it up rather seriously and not to take it up rather lightly and take, pay attention to the details of all the modules of the course because they very clearly specify what are the differences, what are the applicabilities. Uh, these are things that need to be not taken, taken for granted. Um, but it's going to be a very enjoyable course and I think uh, that's essentially when I learned Ponsetti the first time uh, the same thing uh, I was uh, not too sure about uh, me having learned something new but uh, having worked with Club for nine years uh, I would say uh, for me it, it's uh, it's a bliss to work with kids uh, that you have to see every week and uh, see the outcomes in four or five weeks and follow them up for four years and see the outcomes. Uh, I don't think there's any bigger satisfaction than that. Uh -huh. Prem, that's a really nice to hear you talk like that. Um, um, and and you know the to hear you talk about how you get so much job satisfaction from working with children with club feet and helping them is amazing. Um, so I hope that this course will do that for others on the course as well, and that we can um, sort of. Uh, develop knowledge in a whole new group of people who can and, and really take these services forward in countries like uh, similar to in your context and in in all contexts around the world anywhere um, so Prem is there anything um, that we haven't talked about in this little recording that you would like to say to everyone or that you would like to mention well I would say everyone I would basically tell everyone who are participants in this course uh, Enjoy this course, ask a lot of questions. Uh, yes, I think we have a pool of really fascinating people uh, who are uh, really keen in, uh, in passing the knowledge that they have or uh, sharing or learning. And I, I don't think any of us know as much as the other does because I think one thing that I would probably do from this course is learn more. And, uh, and I think this MOOC would probably set the precedence for us to say, okay, have we covered everything? Or, uh, or uh, do we need to do something more? So I think uh, I look forward to this move, yeah? Yeah, it's a very valuable point. Um, everyone on the course can learn from each other. We can, 
people who don't have any experience will ask questions that will challenge people who have experience and people who have a lot of experience will be able to learn from people in different contexts and different situations. So everyone I think can learn something from this course with so many people coming together. So it is important to ask questions and get involved in the discussions and you will be in their prem as a facilitator in the discussion forums um, among uh, many other, we yeah. have a large group of facilitators who are experienced in working with children with clubfoot who will be in the forum so so yeah i um i agree everyone should ask questions and to, to make the most of this course and we can all learn together um which will be great so prem um thanks so much for giving for chatting to us today um it's been really nice to talk to you as our representative from icrc at the start of this course and uh, thank you so much for collaborating with us and helping us provide this course for everyone. Um, we look forward to the course and we'll see you in the forums. Thanks very much, Rachel. Pleasure talking to you and see you at the forum as well.